Hello folks and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi related video. Not a review this time, we're looking at news because once again I've been inundated with lots of news which is very nice indeed and I will give you a batch for this particular video. How many? Maybe, I don't know, 10? Let's say 10. Um, maybe I'll do another one next week because they're coming thick and fast folks. Anyway, let's get on with the first batch, shall we? We're looking at a turntable themed, I think it's safe to say, themed, musical theme, from the band Metallica via Project. Now the Metallica limited edition turntable, complete with mirror finish and an aluminium subplatter, comes all the way from Project. The diamond cut subplatter and pulley come standard on this Metallica deck. And in sound terms that's good because the aluminium subplatter is often seen as an upgrade to other debut Project turntables I'm aware of. So, yeah, intriguing. Anyway, there's also more aluminium for the 8.6mm S-shaped tone arm base and bearing. Now, I may be wrong on this, and I probably am wrong, but that tone arm looks like an updated, tweaked version of that found on the now-deleted Debut 3S audio file. Like I say, could be wrong, but I do see some similarities there. And that turntable also offered an S-shaped configuration, of course. The entire turntable sits upon height-adjustable metal feet. The deck arrives with a Picket S2C cartridge and detachable SME-type head shell. Tracking force and anti-skating are both adjustable. You've got a high-mass glass platter, which is pushed by a speed controller. There's also a toggle switch which moves between 33 and 45 RPM and there's also a 78 RPM option for those deep cut Metallica albums spanning 430 millimeters by 120 by 430 millimeters with a felt platter mat. The whole thing weighs in at four and a half kilograms. Price for this one, 1,100 and £49. Next we have a series of speakers from Dynaudio. From Dynaudio, the Focus series is a complete wireless sound system. And you've got three flavors, three options. You have the Focus 10, the Focus 30, and the Focus 50. Focus integrates Wisa, Wisa, Wisa? I think it's Wisa, the way it's spelled anyway. Wisa HT technology. And what's so special about Wisa HT technology? Well, this thing is designed to work well in busy Wi-Fi environments. If you've got all kinds of Wi-Fi knocking about your home and there's a possibility of interference, which does happen, and sometimes Wi-Fi can stumble or fall over because of that, this WESA HT technology is supposed to solve the case. Now, WESA HT inside the Dynaudio speakers supports, well, it transmits and receives uncompressed audio up to 24-bit 96K. It also supports sound systems up to 7.1 and 5.1.2 over a dedicated wireless network. Aside from the streaming capabilities, each speaker has varied connections within. They include things like a subwoofer output with trigger, Dirac live calibration options, and we set connectivity, especially for wireless TV connections. Prices, well, they vary, and I can give you the whole gamut on this occasion. For the Focus 10, we're looking at 5,000 euros or 
£4,399 or $5,500. For the Focus 30, I'm going up to €7,500 or £6,499 or $8,250. And for the Focus 50, we're looking at around €10,000 or £8,699. And as for dollars, well, you're looking at 11,000, thank you very much. And now an integrated amplifier. Well, it's an upgrade, really, from Project, the Maya S3. The S3 is an integrated amplifier featuring eight inputs in total, including digital and wireless Bluetooth options. Encased in an aluminium chassis and pushing out 23 watts over 8 ohms, you'll find three standard analog RCAs. You also get a built-in moving magnet phono amp, a digital coax feeding from a Cirrus Logic CS4344 chip, which handles signals up to 24-bit 192K, you also get a couple of optical ports and Bluetooth 5, which supports aptX HD. You also get a built-in headphone amplifier, and that offers a 6.35mm port. And there's a bundled remote that handles the product control. Available in black or silver, spanning 206mm by 55 by 176mm, and weighing just over one kilogram, you're looking at a price of £539. Now, there's a host of channels on YouTube, and when a channel gets to a certain level, they get hassled, in the nicest possible way of course, by associated companies to do whatever they're talking about. In my case, obviously, Hi-Fi. And I've had a company on at me, basically, called Arillic. And so, just to keep them quiet, I thought I'd tell you about one of their products. I don't know too much about them. And I have asked them, and I'm waiting for them to get back. I assume they're a Chinese outfit, but I'm not too sure. Maybe you know. Maybe you can tell me. So let me just mention one of their products, which is the A30 Plus wireless amplifier. It is compact and multi-featured. It includes AirPlay and Bluetooth 5.0, and it pushes out 18 watts over 8 ohms. The A30 Plus uses something called the 4Stream app, which controls digital streaming around and about all the usual internet services. Digitally, the amplifier can handle signals up to 24-bit 192, and the amp also works with a sort of in-house app called ACP Workbench. That'll cost you an extra $20, but it does allow you to tweak a host of EQs and DSP effects. There's a remote control included, which has a 50-foot range. This dinky little amplifier spans 132mm by 86 by 27mm. It only weighs around 0.35 of a kilogram, which is well under a pound in weight. In terms of price, well, I only have dollars for now, but that price is $139. Next, I have a high-end cartridge from a Japanese cartridge manufacturer called, and I think you pronounce it, Jico. J-I-C-O. I think it's Jico. Now they have 
cartridge designs which span all kinds of price points. Now this apparently is a remodel of an older design from, let's say older, not that old, 2019. Now this could be pronounced Seto Hori or Seto Ori or, well, you make your own mind up. I'll put the name on there. You have a try. Anyway, this is, as I say, a new high-end cartridge from this Japanese outfit. Intriguingly though, it integrates the cartridge with the head shell. It comes as one unit. As I say, this is based on an original 2019 design, and it's machined from aluminium and copper ingots. Now, the reason, apparently, that the cartridge and the head shell are integrated is, well, Gico are very eager to find a center of gravity, and combining the two parts, that's what they've done, they say. The reason you want to find a center of gravity for the whole unit, well, Apparently, it makes the cartridge more sensitive, which means you increase the sound quality. Also, you do away with all of those extra screws because you'd normally attach your cartridge to the head shell with a set of screws, at least two. So that introduces micro resonances. So you do away with all of that as well. Now, apparently, this cartridge is based on the same technology as used by Newman, the design of the cutting head. I don't know too much more about that, but that's what I hear. In terms of the stylus, well, it's a micro ridge and that hangs off a boron cantilever. Now, the only price I have at the moment is in yen, in Japanese yen, but you're looking at an equivalent price of around two and a half thousand pounds. Apparently, it'll be available in Europe and the USA, so I believe. And, well, I'd love to grab one. I'm not sure if I can, but I'll have a go. Talking to Gico is, well, it takes time to get things done with Gico. Uh, how can I put this? It's not a case of saying to them, okay, send me one. There's a bit of, I don't know, discussion before decisions are made, shall we say. It's a bit of a committee thing. So... I will make efforts, so I'll try and get one. I might have more joy with another cartridge they're working on. In fact, some of you may already have one. It's the J44 cartridge, which is based on the Shaw M44. This is a compatible cartridge design, and it's priced, so I hear, again, maybe you can tell me otherwise, it's priced around 100 pounds, give or take, and again, I'm trying to grab one in for review, so I'll let you know. Next up, we have a turntable, and a lot of you will know the name. The Wand from New Zealand. I'm expecting to see the whole range, well, when I say range, I mean the turntable and a few arms from The Wand released in the UK. This will be a sort of relaunch. We're looking at three different arm types, and we're looking at the turntable, which is called the 14-4. The 14-4 turntable is so called because of the 14-inch platter made up of four acrylic layers designed to damp vibration and noise transfer. The design of this turntable is interesting to say the least. The platter is complete with a screw-down record clamp machined from acrylic to match the platter which also allows you to see the record label when it's being played. The main structure of the unit is made from German plywood, asymmetric in shape, hand-oiled, and fitted with a zentroidal three-point suspension system. Now, the center of the suspension is not where you'd expect it. It's not around the spindle. It's actually close to the playing arc of the arm to maximize shock and vibration 
rejection. Now, the wand will accommodate any one of those three wand arms I alluded to at the beginning, and they span nine and a half inches, or 10.3 inches, or 12 inches. But if you really want, you can use arms from other companies. Fitted with a DC motor offering 33 or 45 RPM, and there is a 78 RPM factory option. The 14.4 does have a lid, although it's mechanically outside of the playing system. Price? Well, the price isn't fixed yet, but expect something around £3,500 and arms starting somewhere around £1,500 with money off, say 10% off if you buy an arm and a turntable together. But again, I'm going to try and get this turntable in for review. It intrigues me, so I think I need to see it. More news soon. Next up, we have a pre-amplifier from New Prime. Now, the new Prime PRA9X is a fully balanced pre-amplifier. There is a phono amplifier, moving magnet, built in, and there's also a headphone amplifier built in to the chassis, and that gives you a 6.3 millimeter output. Techie-wise, well, the preamp is based on something called a Muses, that's M-U-S-E-S, -E Muses 8820, bipolar input, dual op amp module, and there's a mouthful. Inputs include that phono amplifier I mentioned. You get a couple of RCA pairs plus XLR. In terms of outputs, you have that headphone amplifier plus a pair of RCA outs and XLR outputs. In terms of price, 1,200 and 95 euros. And don't forget, if you need any contact points for any of these products, down in the description, you'll find some links. We're going high end now from DCS. We're looking at an upgrade to the Bartok. This is the Bartok 2.0. Now, Bartok is a combination unit. It's a combination of DAC, music streamer, uh, upsampler, headphone amplifier as well. The Bartok 2.0 updates the mapping algorithm that controls the DCS ring DAC. It also includes improvements to DSD upsampling and it adds new filter options. There's something called the DSD Filter 5, which has been included which has a sort of relaxed roll off with a smoother phase response, which helps to remove much of the out of band noise. Price, well, it's a high end box, I won't kid you. We're looking at £17,750 with that built in headphone amplifier. And if you don't want the headphone amp, then it's a measly. 15,750. I think we have a couple left and then I'll let you go. And we're looking at Audio Technica. And it's a bit of a charity thing uh, because of the events in the East. <laughs> looking at limited edition slip mats. Now, Audio Technica has released 300 of these limited edition turntable slip mats, and they feature artwork by calligraphy and lettering artist one Eugene Bird, who is based in, is it Kiev? It used to be Kiev, didn't it? It was a Kiev? Kiev? Anyway, forgive me for that. 100% of the sales of the slip mat will be split evenly between 
the largest children's hospital in the Ukraine, and an animal charity called You Animals. Both charities were carefully selected with the help of the artist. Now, the design on the slip mat focuses on some of Ukraine's iconic symbols. So you get the blue and yellow palette of colors and flowers, which represent peace and life. The artist's mandala-like art pieces come from a long period of researching European and Arabic calligraphy. And now he's trying to bring these classical ideas into modern mediums, everything from old vinyl records to skateboards and even mirrors. The 12-inch slip mass is two millimeters thick and made from medium density felt. It's glazed on the printed side. Also, I must mention that the printed design leaves no raised areas on the surface of the slip mass and is printed right to the edge. So you should have no problems if you want to actually use it while playing with your hi-fi. The limited edition slip mats will be available exclusively from Audio Technica's website and Again, you can find a link below. And the last of this batch of news items is a, well, it's one of those speakers in cars type of news story, which I seem to be doing more of recently. I think this is the third one I've done in recent times. Last one was devoted to Lotus, I recall. I'll put a little link up there if you want to have a look at it. This one, well, we're going from Lotus to Maserati. high-end sports car, bit of a supercar, I suppose you'd call it. This is, well, actually, this is a high-end car called the MC20, but it's a high-end version of that. So it's a high-end of a high-end, as it were. And it's called, and again, these names are sent to try me, the Cielo, Cielo, C-I-E-L-O. I'll put, a, I'll put the whole thing down there. You can pronounce this in your own time. Cielo, I'm gonna go with Cielo because it sounds, you know, it sounds good. It sounds right. I could be wrong. Anyway, in terms of the speaker system itself, well, this is a car with one of those removable roof jobbies. And the problem is when you take the roof off a car, you change the entire arrangement. It's like having a removable roof off your listening room, it's going to change how your hi-fi sounds. Well, you get the same result in the MC20. If you've got the roof on, the speaker system sounds a certain way. If you take the roof off, it's going to change everything. So, Sonus Faber, for it is they who are supplying the speakers, they've got a neat little system. So, the sound envelope changes when the roof is off. So Sonus Faber actually optimized the speakers to fit the, as they say, unique acoustic and positioning needs of the cabin. That's their quote. In effect, as I say, the speakers adjust their performance depending on whether the roof is on or off. I think that's pretty neat, personally. So in effect, these speakers automatically change. They update the time alignment they alter the equalization and the sound levels. This is a 12 speaker system. So we're looking at a couple of tweeters, two mid-range and two woofers on the door panels, one tweeter and mid-range in the center dashboard, plus a couple of tweeters and a couple of mid-range units in the rear. Now, in terms of the car and the pricing, the top of the range model will set you back a cool 200 and $50,000. And on that high flying note, I'm going to end this video and allow you to dream a little bit. Thank you very much for sticking to the end of this video. And if I could ask you if you wouldn't mind just gazing below and clicking on the like and subscribe buttons, it would help the channel just to move on through the YouTube algorithm. And if you, as I say, if you want to look below for contact links, lots of websites down there for you to 
check out more about your favorite news item. Also, check down there for live chapter headings if you want to navigate around this video. There are links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Also, my website, which has lots of stuff over there you won't find over here. And there's my Patreon page too, which has exclusive videos and guides, and there's Patreon previews, and there's my Hi-Fi tour, and it's all over there, and it's all exclusive to Patreon. So please check that out. I will be back for Tuneful Tuesday, and I think we're going to be doing a Masterworks next time around. So be back for that one, and I hope to have your company, otherwise I get extraordinarily lonely without you. So, until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.